And here to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to stage is Bill Reed. Man, oh man. I tell you, there are a lot of people out here who remember the states, and I certainly do. I tell you, in the 13 years we've been here in the Norma, we've had great musicians walk across the state. And I've had the opportunity to introduce them to the Norfolk Hampton Roads audience. But tonight is a really special occasion for me because I couldn't be any prouder. These guys came out and they did it. And so I want to tell all the local bands out there that if they can go out there and get a major record deal, you can do it too. So, because so far, the only band, only rock band, at a Tidewater to be signed to a major worldwide record label are the States. Ladies and gentlemen, the States! Give it up for the States, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you guys, let it rip. Play, damn you. Thank you, Bill Reed, Jeff Mason, and Beer Magazine. Good to see you all this evening. I'd like to tell you it's truly an honor to be here tonight. In the spring of 1977, uh, Butch Germano, no longer with us, but he's here with us tonight for a few minutes, buddy, knocked on my apartment door and said, I'm forming a band with Joe McDonald. We're going to get a record deal or we're going to play it on the radio. Do you want to join? And I said, the hell yeah. So uh, I know Jimmy as a you know, gifted uh, songwriter and a great vocalist. And Jimmy had been out to California, so I figured, well, this guy knows something about the record industry, so we're going to get one. Well, in any case, within two years, we were out in California uh, recording uh, on a major label. and. According to uh, one of the Hornsman brothers, we were living the life of uh, conspicuous consumption in West Hollywood Hills. And uh, it was all true. And it, was, it was something. Uh, a short time later, we recorded our second album uh, in a uh, studio called uh, Sound City. Uh, you may have heard about that. That's the uh, uh, Dave Grohl uh, music video, Sound City. Uh, we were very honored and privileged to have actually recorded our second album in, in that place. It was very, very cool. So that was very neat. Anyway, we did the cross-country tours, opened for Who's Who, everybody uh, that was big at the time. We were living the dream. But it was actually the local music scene which started for me in the early 60s that inspired me to realize my dream of making it big. And I actually got to become part of a band where everybody's musical contributions were appreciated by each other and the band. We loved each other's brothers, we really did. And that was really special. But it was clubs like the Warhouse, Friar Tucks, King's Head Inn, uh, Kogan's, Bodies, Rose Gallery, and many more that allowed the embryonic form of the states to get the songs good, uh, hum our performances, and be prepared uh, to get the record deal when we got it. Um, original music was everywhere at the time. And bands like Channel One, Snuff, Wax and Poets, X Rays, and the Jets, all those bands kept the music the bar high. There was something going on in the area at that time. It really was. It was really special. And we were very fortunate to have played for it at that time. But in any case, it was you know, these people in places and times that made me you know, think you know, maybe they can actually do something. So there was good times, there was some bad times, but in the end, I wouldn't change the thing. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Very well delivered, Steve. 
I wrote a little bit more, so uh, and at my age, I, I couldn't possibly do it by memory. So. Um, given the stature of the people that have received this award prior to us, um, I and I know we all are really honored to be in their company. And I'm newly relocated back to the area. Uh, I want to say that no matter where I've been, I've always been proud to say that I was from Virginia. And, uh, it goes without saying because of our, our history here in, in the country, but also because of the great musical heritage here, uh, Norfolk in particular, it's very rich. Uh, there are more than a few key figures from here that have made marks on the global stage, both from hit records as artists and also as producers. It's well documented and acknowledged that even the Beatles were influenced by music that was created right here in the city. Every guitar player my age, and I know there are a few here tonight, uh, can tell you stories of standing close, as close as you could get to watch Michael Johnstone play guitar, and how you, you couldn't believe your eyes and ears, uh, because he was just that good. He was as, as good as Clapton. Uh, later we would wonder, as we became adults and got to know Michael, on some level, if it was just our youth that made us feel that way. But we knew we, that we were right. He was that good. I just recently learned by talking to him in, in an offhand comment he made that he was Dwayne Allman's roommate at military school, so that, that figures. Mike went on to play with Leon Russell, Merle Haggard, and uh, was a member of the New Riders of the Purple Sage. And you can't talk about world-class talent in this area without mentioning Arthur Wheeler and the late Randy Pope. I know I can't. Um, I'm very, very proud of the States. Over time, I've embraced that it was a once-in-a-lifetime gift to be a member of that band. It was truly a master's degree in, in music creation and performance. It really was. And for those years, it was a real good look at what it's like to play in the major leagues and realize that while you were there, you belonged there. And if there was a downside, it was that every musical endeavor that you had that followed it never lived up to it. But I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, aside from a couple of shows, reunion shows that we did in 2000, here at the Norva and over in Hampton for Dennis Parker. Our last regular performances occurred 30 years ago. And standing here and receiving this award for the band three decades after we disbanded is testament that some of you us have the same reverence as we have for our musical heroes. Yeah. Just a little bit more. At every state's performance, I knew I was sharing the stage with top-level talent, and in Jimmy McDonald's case, I was standing next to greatness. He's still the best singer frontman ever seen in this era. But it was a... It was a combination of things that set the states up for success. We had an incredible work ethic. We were real brothers in every sense of the word. We had a songwriting team turning out songs that radio was happily adding to rotation even before we had our record deal. And we had Butch Germano. We had real fans showing up to sound check at 5 p.m. or so in the afternoon and seeing a line of people waiting to get in for a show that wasn't going to start till nearly 10. It was like a dream. And the fans kept the ball rolling once it started rolling for the state. And I have to go back and talk about greatness for just a second. Morgan Hampton is not here tonight. He lives near San Francisco, so that's a long trip. Yeah. To tell you how good Morgan was, I have to stand in a very long line. I remember playing in Raleigh, North Carolina, and seeing Elton John's drummer, Nigel Olson, walk through the door. He had heard so much about Morgan that he had to see it for himself. Uh, or the time we played a show with Toto and Mark Merman, who's standing on the stage here, it was he was back there. Mark was Jeff Caro's drum tech at that time, and he told him, you're really going to have to work tonight because this guy, Morgan Hampton, is a really good drummer. 
He also said the same thing to the, to the singer. And when Morgan left the band, there were some really, really big shoes to fill. Steve Archer stepped in and proved right away that we would not skip a beat. Literally, we could have played without rehearsing. He knew the stuff so well. Thank you. After Butch stopped playing and began, began managing the band full time, we picked up this cute hotshot bass player kid who liked the Beatles as much as me. I took him for pizza on Hampton Boulevard to convince him to leave his band and become the bass player for the state. I said, it'll be a good move. David Waltrip's first full day with the States started at East Tennessee University. After that gig, we drove all night to play an afternoon show in front of thousands of people on the oceanfront for the March of Dimes. Immediately left there to play later that same evening in front of 12,000 people at Hampton Coliseum. Welcome aboard, Dave. Or as Butch told him one time, do you want to go see you too, or do you want to be like you too? <laughs> and I've got just a little bit more. Before I finish, I, I promised I would mention a couple of high points uh, that occurred. We may be the only band ever to fire the Rolling Stones saxophone player, Bobby Keys. He was hired during the recording of Picture Me with You to play on a song, and he was scheduled to leave the next morning for Paris to record with the Stones, so he didn't take us very seriously. And this, this was the guy that played on Brown Sugar, for Christ's sake, something like that. So we fired him and we hired this guy, Jerry Tremondville, to play the part we needed. He had played the, the beautiful sax solo on Rod Stewart's Tonight's the Night. Another outstanding moment was having piano virtuoso Nicky Hopkins played on a couple of songs from that same album. He had played piano on Revolution by the Beatles as well as just about everything the Stones ever recorded. And I wouldn't be surprised if the imprints of our faces aren't still on that control glass at Sound City. Butch and Jimmy were invited to Stevie Nicks' uh, her manager's house for her birthday party. And uh, when everyone went out, for a mood enhancement cigarette, Butch, Butch loves Stevie Nicks, so he placed himself in line so that it would leave her lips directly to his. And we, we were just talented kids from Norfolk, Virginia, living in the so. Once again, thank you to Veer, thank you to Jeff Lazy and his staff, the sponsors, my area's peers, especially the fans, are very much appreciated. David Webb, you're missed by so many. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff, I promise I'll keep this short. I don't have a steel trap of a memory of the very end. It's got it. You put it on paper. It works. Um, and I think I'll start from the end. I want to say thanks to all the remarkable people uh, throughout our time together, opportunity that we had to play for, uh, for people in Tidewater, uh, because that's where it was most prevalent for us to show up for a sound check and see people standing in line in really shitty weather. And then later on, just being greeted with the same remarkable smiles. So thanks to Tiger listening uh, audience first. <laughs> if I could say also, this is a remarkable honor. So thank you, Jeff, and uh, your staff of remarkable writers that keep doing great things for local music. It's really appreciated. It's top notch. Every time I read, I'm inspired. They all do a wonderful job from here. So thank you. And, uh, um, so we <laughs> start at the beginning. You never know what's going to happen when you when you put a microphone in, in front of a retired frontman. You know. I try to keep it light. Uh, we've all had opportunities lately over the last couple of years to reflect on our career together uh, since Butch passed. 
Um, and I realize now uh, what a special time it was for myself and being able to share with these guys uh, what it meant to them. Uh, it's been a wonderful last couple of years in spite of losing our brother. Achieving success with the band of brothers is an amazing thing. Our time together was influenced, it has influenced, and benefited me in every endeavor in my life. So, uh, this one's for you, Bridget. When we were coming up, we were told, as kids, this is a long time ago, so... We were told that if you thought you had it, that you needed to leave here and go to the big city and prove it. So, in my early 20s, I joined a, an original act called Mason. We went to uh, Los Angeles and tried to make it. But we didn't. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I did do. I soaked up everything that I could possibly learn about the music industry. I decided to come home and not make the same mistake a second time. Make the second time count. So when I got back, I wrote a batch of songs. Mary and I switched off and on, having jobs to support each other. I called Butch, I called Steve, who at the time, oh, excuse me, they were here, some heroes of mine uh, coming up through Jake vs. Curly. And uh, so I called them and I said, uh, you want to start a band? And they said, yeah. So then the three of us learned some songs. We called Barry, who was on the West Coast trying to make a name for himself at the time. Uh, he said yes which completely made my day. Uh, so with a handful of songs, a couple of covers, and a bar manager that would let us come in and play one set, twice, for no money, we started what ended up becoming the state. A year and a half later, we signed with the largest independent label in the world, Christmas. With Bob Schindler now on keyboards. Thank you, Bob, for everything, brother. We headed into the studio to record our first record, then we hit the road and did a national tour with all of us. A lot of people thought it couldn't happen, but it did. I'll never forget what a fantastic time it was for music here. I want to say congratulations to everyone here tonight that have gained the attention of the fan base that support them, it's not easy. Congratulations to all of the acts that are taking the next step to national recognition, that's not easy. For all the players here tonight that are trying just to make it up to the next step, I want to say, you can, you can make it. If the talent, the desire there, you can do it. Keep doing what you do, do it well, stay true to each other and your fans, and keep the faith that what you're creating is meaningful and good. I want to say thanks to Steve Morissette, Bob Schindler, Morgan Hampton, Steve Archer, Dave Waltrip, and all the incredible people that, that we've had an opportunity to play with. Our remarkable crew, Mickey Watts, Mark Merman, David Harwood, Gary Anderson, Sean Kelly, and Mark Dowdy. The guys that burned it all night, every night, every night, every night in the world. I want to say thank you to Kathy Moore, Dave Sherry, Johnny Evans, Dennis Parker, Bill Reed. Oh, and the best of all, The best part of my ride was the fact that Mary and I could raise a family and have a career in the music industry at the same time. So thanks for the love of my life. Appreciate it, Slim. God bless. Give it up for stage, everybody.